Hey, welcome back. A lot of Austinites like to get out on the trails and go for a run. There's a growing sport, though, known as barefoot running, just like it sounds. But why give up the laces and treads for what nature gave you? And joining us now is ultramarathoner Jason Robiar. He's also founder of the Barefoot Running University and has a book out on the subject, tours around, talks about it. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Uh, how did you get started with uh, barefoot running? Why did you decide at one point to, to lose the shoes? Well, I really wanted to run an ultra marathon, mm -hmm. specifically a 50 miler. Yeah. Uh, but I tried running in traditional shoes, ran into a lot of injuries, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, bad knees, bad back, pretty much you name it, yeah. I experienced it. If you're a runner, that's all familiar. Yes, it was. And I realized I would never be able to reach that goal mm -hmm. if I didn't try something different. And I stumbled on barefoot running. Yeah, and it's, it's not quite a pun there, but I mean, and, and what's the difference? How does it work and the benefit, essentially, of, of using what, uh, what our maker gave us? Really, it's, the, the biggest difference is it allows you to run with good form. Mm -hmm. uh, it's less about what you have on your feet as far as shoes, more about changing your running form so you run in a way that doesn't create as much impact. More heel toe? Uh, less heel toe. Less heel toe. Yes. Uh, most runners will land with a really pronounced heel strike. Sure. Uh, where they'll, uh, on a locked knee, that generates a lot of force. Yeah, yeah. If you land with your feet under your center of gravity or under your hips and mm -hmm. keep your knees bent, it completely eliminates a lot of that jarring force. Because my thing is, I know a lot of friends who are runners and they wear the, uh, the running shoes and they have arch supports to kind of even out their hips so that they're, everything's level. I mean, if your hips are, or your legs are a little shorter, one shorter than the other, you know, and, and a, lot of that, a lot of us run into that. I mean, how do, you, how do you overcome that? It's all in the stride? Actually, it's interesting. Yeah. I know a lot of people that have a leg length discrepancy, yeah. and once they switch to barefoot running, uh, your leg length becomes less of an issue if you are able to keep your knees bent and, and keep your feet under your center of gravity. Uh, it's not an issue. Yeah. They, can, they can run fine without and, it. And you can run farther and, and with less fatigue? I was. For yeah. me, uh, the big draw was it made me a much more efficient runner. Mm -hmm. uh, I can run 50 miles, 100 miles, uh, much easier now than if I wear a big bulky shoe. And so, so you, you wear a shoe now and it's like, ugh, get that thing off. Yes, actually it feels <laughs> very strange to put on a traditional running shoe. Um, it's almost like a cat, if you put tape on a cat's paw, it's yeah. sort of that same experience. <laughs> okay. just, I can imagine you get used to anything, or not used to anything. So, and it's not just barefoot running we're talking about here, there's something called minimalist running too. What's that about? The idea is you can't run barefoot everywhere. Uh, I love, love running in the mountains, sure. and almost every situation you, you have to have some, some sort of protection on your feet. Mm -hmm. So the idea behind the shoe is it allows you to run with that same good natural form, but gives you some protection from the elements. Okay, and you're working with the Merrill people. There's a lot of shoemakers out there, but I noticed just from my you know, experience and love of the outdoors that uh, the Vibram people came out with that. We, you might have seen this. It has uh, actual toes in it. It looks like a foot. Yes. With, with kind of a rubber surround on it. And so this is a, a, a version of that? or what? Are... It is. Uh, the five fingers are essentially like a glove. Yeah. Uh, the Merrill barefoot shoes are ultimately more like a, uh, like a mitten. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to worry about getting each of your toes in individual pockets. And to be honest, uh, not everybody wants to wear the five-toed shoes yeah. around because you tend to stand out. Yeah, that's true enough. And so, you know, what kind of training is involved in this? Or more importantly, the transition. You can't just take off your shoes and, and go for a run, you're saying? No, it's not. I usually like to use the analogy of a cast. If you break your arm and put mm. it in a cast, over the six or eight weeks, it's going to weaken. Mm. And, and when you take it off, you have to go through a rehab period okay. to get the functional strength back. The same thing happens with your feet. A traditional running shoe keeps it... Uh, in place so there's no motion, right. it weakens. Once you take the shoe off, you have to strengthen it. Uh, strengthen it back up before you can get back to the level you're at. Totally want to get, uh, try that out. And, and you've got a, an event tonight, I know. Backwoods is holding a, an in-store hands-on event. We'll say feed on, maybe, a clinic with uh, Jason Robiart tonight at 7. And if you go there, you'll have a chance to uh, go on a short run with uh, you, Jason, and some staff there. This is the store, by the way, at 12 921 Hill Country Boulevard in Bee Cave. And so, uh, obviously, it's going to be a uh, kind of a fun event. New for us tonight. It's a lot of them, probably. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. We have some experienced barefoot runners that will be there, mm -hmm. aside from myself. We'll answer questions talk about the pros and cons of it, yeah. uh, pros and cons of shoes. I think we're giving away a Merrill gift certificate, so uh, okay, we'll it'll be good. a good time. Jason Robiar, thanks for coming in. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Outstanding.